and then you break us out of that with the whole like i'm coming for your coochie and then it you know hard left turn Hey friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to Thrills and Kills Book 2 where we talk about everything horror, thriller, and scary. So today's video is brought to you by the Halloween Safety Babysitter's Guide and this piece of trash of a book. I'm sorry, I wanted to like it. Let's get into it. Oh and I got these cute little ghosty earrings. I got a pack of earrings off Amazon. All of these like Halloween spooky stuff and they're not being clip on so I can't really wear them for that long but they're my cute little ghosts. Um, it's October 6th. I've actually read five books already and watched a good amount of scary movies. So I'll be doing kind of like a week one wrap up vlog coming soon. I'm also participating in a few different uh, Halloween themed readathons, mostly trying to stick with the Halloween weekend readathon. I have pretty bad ADHD and so I cannot stick to a TBR to save my life. So I figured let me just do one that's on the weekends and hopefully I can stick to it. A few days ago, this book came in for me at my library. I'm very glad that I ended up getting this as a library and did not spend my money or uh, space on my bookshelves for it. Uh, I think I was actually the very first person to get it, but unfortunately when they took off the dust jacket to like wrap it in plastic, they put it back on backwards um, so and upside down. So if I actually was going to be reading the book, it would look like that instead of like this. So, it is what it is, but minor things that annoy me. All right, let's get into it. Let me give you a synopsis and I'll tell you what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and kind of what I've seen on Goodreads, um, and we'll go from there. I'm trying to film and my dogs are going crazy. Every time Amazon comes, they go berserk. And yes, I know my thing says Ghost Eater, and the title is Ghost Eaters, whatever bite me if it's a problem. So let's start with the synopsis. It says, pop a pill, see the dead. Side effects may occur. Erin hasn't been able to set a single boundary with her charismatic but reckless college ex-boyfriend Silas. We probably all have one of those. When he asks her to bail him out of rehab again, she knows she needs to cut him off. But days after he gets out, Silas turns up dead in their hometown of Richmond, Virginia, and Erin's world falls apart. <clears throat> then a friend tells her about Ghost, capital G, a new drug that allows users to see the dead. Want to get haunted? He asks, grieving and desperate for closure with Silas, Aaron agrees to a pill-popping seance, but the drug has unfathomable side effects, and once you take it, you can never go back. It says, from the acclaimed author of so-and-so and so-and-so, this is the first book I've read from him, so none of that actually mattered to me. It says, this wholly original and utterly terrifying tale will make you think twice about opening doors to the unknown. Also, uh, has Amazon started bringing stuff to your house in unmarked cars? There's like a random car in my driveway and that's why the dogs are going berserk. So I apologize, but we're gonna have to roll with it. They dropped off the package and the car is still sitting there. Like, I'm trying to film. So my first clue that this was not gonna go great for me should have been the fact that there's three authors on the back. I'm not gonna say which, but three authors that I know I don't like their work and they gave really glowing reviews and their little blurbs on the back. So even more reason for me not to go read those people books because I don't trust their opinions. There was one author who I do like who had an interesting blurb and said it's a gothic punk graveyard tale. So between that and the synopsis, I thought, oh, this is gonna be a cool book. This is gonna work for me. Yeah, if you read the synopsis, um, throw that out because the book is not anything like what the fucking synopsis says. The main part of it, how it says there's um, seances, yeah, those don't happen until almost halfway through the entire book. When I looked it up on Goodreads after I was done, it looks like it's getting about 3.4 stars. And here's the breakdown. 26% of reviews are five star, 32% four star, 28% three star, 10% two star, and 2% one star. So. It's a pretty even mix. I've seen better, I've seen worse. So let's start off with the things that I thought were good about it. All right, the barking should be better now. Sorry about that. I went out there, it wasn't even Amazon, just some random ass lady in my driveway. And then I asked her to leave and she asked me to with me. Like, you're in my driveway. I live in the boonies and there's two hundred pound Great Pyrenees snapping at you and barking at you. And I tell you to leave and you like, don't see anything weird about this? Like, back to the fucking book. All right, so the good things about it. Um, I did think it was an interesting concept, obviously, or I wouldn't have you know, taken it out of the library to read it. Um, the whole thing about, you know, you can take a drug that then causes you to be haunted and you can communicate with the dead. I thought that was a unique 
take on sort of like haunting possession, haunted house type books. Um, that part was really cool. There was also a really neat historical tie-in. So it takes place in Richmond, Virginia. That's some place I've visited. Um, I really like to learn about the history of that area and of Virginia in general. And some of the ghosts that they could see were, you know, historical ghosts. Um, and it kind of went into some of the like Civil War history and even like the plantation history of the area and how that tied into the general story. I thought he did a really good job with that. The book opens up in Hollywood Cemetery and you know at first you would think oh this is in LA. No, Hollywood Cemetery is a very large cemetery in downtown Richmond. I've been there. It's it's quite beautiful as far as cemeteries go and I thought he did a really good job describing it um, considering like I've been there. I even went and pulled pictures I had on my Facebook um, from <clears throat> when I was there like 10 years ago and yet his description in the book is very close to the actual photos I have. So good job there. There was one of the main characters, um, or I guess a friend of the main character named Amara. She was a really cool chick, um, had a mind of her own, like was going places, had a plan, was sticking to her plan, knew she wanted to leave to go live in New York City and like was not allowing her friend's nonsense to drag her down. And the best thing that she ever did was get the fuck out of Richmond and leave. <laughs> so kudos to her. And I will say when scary stuff did happen, the writing was really good. There, there were actually some snippets of really scary scenes of her, the main character, Erin, being haunted. Mainly there's one that happens in the bathroom at her new job. And the way it's written is, is quite scary. And you're like, oh my God, if I was seeing this, like, yeah, I'd be having a panic attack too and, and reacting this way. Um, but those were so few and far between that like the payoff for those was not worth it. Like, the juice was not worth the squeeze in this book. So. Um, those are the good things that I'll give it before we get into the bad because I don't want you thinking I'm just tearing this book apart. I actually gave some thought to this. So let me say I was about 40 pages into this book and already wondering should I DNF it. Uh, I really struggle and I don't want to ever DNF because then I feel like I can't give a fair analysis or a fair review. Um, so and honestly I just wanted to see if it would get any better and give it a fair shake. It didn't though. So. <laughs> So I'll say the reasons in the very beginning, when I started it last night, why I thought I was going to DNF it. Um, so number one, it's one narrator, Erin, our main character, is narrating it in her point of view. But the way it was written, the narrative voice, it felt like it was three different characters. Even though it's I, I, I the whole way through, it just would randomly switch paragraph to paragraph, page to page, like her tone of voice, the way she's speaking, and it wasn't... It, there wasn't a reason to. It's not like we're flashing forward and back, forward and back in timeline, and that's why. Like, it's not like a teenager and a 50 year old woman, right? Like you would expect those to have very different types of voices. It's just like he couldn't write a consistent um, young female character, right? Like he doesn't know how to write a good 20 year old female character, essentially. That was the problem. It was all over the place. The author is also a fan of using like big words or unique words for what reason I don't know so again like last night when I started it I only read 40 pages before I went to bed and in the span of 40 pages he used the word liminal I think three times and one time I, I'm not joking it was like this page and then turn the page and liminal had been used on either side of those pages like how often are we using the word liminal and how often is a 20 year old using the word liminal in real life but yet there it is so he just made some really odd word choices that I just didn't like. It was just, I don't know. I didn't like the way his writing style was. It was very odd, but it would come and go. It wouldn't always be like that, but then you could tell when it's like, oh, he's trying to throw in big words to sound really fancy here. Now, Aaron was an English major in college, so I don't know if there was some of that, but if that was the reason he was doing this on purpose, like it didn't come across that way. It just came across like, Oh, you're just trying to impress us with whatever word you know but you keep recycling the same damn word so like it's not it's not impressive it's it's like you have very limited vocab of big word and i'll say the first about 80 pages maybe 85 pages were boring so even this morning when i picked it up again from page 40 to 80 we'll say i was like oh my god am i just going to dnf this or do i need to push through it's just like nothing happens and i understand there needs to be a setup period in a book i enjoy slow burn so that was not the problem it was just like nothing like flat She's doing things for what? What is guiding her actions? Why is she thinking this? You know, it was just, it was weird. There was no decision-making behind the choices, at least that were explained to us in those first 80 pages. 
And then, like I said, in the blurb, it talks about seances. Well, no seance happens until maybe 40, 45%, maybe even 50% of the way through the book. So don't make that a main point in your blurb if half the book, it doesn't even exist. Again, I understand there needs to be a setup point, but not 50% of the book. All right, so speaking of our main character, Erin, um, I found her obnoxious. She's a pushover, obsessed with this toxic relationship, friendship, on again, off again, relationship with this boy, Silas. I understand that was the point of the book, but it just wasn't done well in my opinion. It came off way too obnoxious versus like just showing her as a troubled young woman and making us like want to root for her. If she just came off as totally obnoxious and you're like, why the hell are you doing this? Why are you throwing your life away? This is some mediocre, obnoxious, punk ass white boy uh, with too much time on his hands and he's dragging you down into his toxicity and you are literally throwing away your entire life relationships with your family your friends your job literally your life you're paying with it for what for again this mediocre white boy that doesn't give a shit about you and it again it fell too far on the side of the fence of this is just obnoxious and i hate what you're doing and not on the side of this is just someone who's fighting their demons and, and we're wanting to see them win okay this is probably my most obnoxious point of this whole book and i was posting stories on instagram I shit you not, in three separate points in this book, the author does something where he says, coochie coochie, coochie coochie coo. I'm coming for your coochie coochie. I, I shit you not. So in the first two instances, it's coochie coo in the piece of female anatomy. The third instance, it's more of like <clears throat> baby talk, like, oh, coochie coochie coo with the baby. But let me explain. So he would have some actual like scary shit happening to Aaron, our main character. And then let's say there was like, in her mind, she's seeing like a bug crawling on her and it's crawling up her leg. And it would literally like, it, it would break through her thoughts and, and say literally, as if it's the point of view of the bug. I'm coming for your coochie cooch. I'm coming for that coochie, coochie coochie coo over and over. But there was just a really scary scene and dude you were doing a really good job with it and like i actually was starting to like this book and then you break us out of that with the whole like i'm coming for your coochie i mean how many times do i need to read about that in a book three times is definitely wait I, I would even say one time is too much because what was the fucking point it was just stupid and it was again as if like you're just some dude bro like author who like wants to show us that oh i can write a female young female oh and what she be worried about something crawling up her coochie like what the fuck anyways <laughs> that just i almost i threw the book at one point the second time it happened i threw the book because i couldn't i couldn't stand it and i had to like take a break eat lunch and come back the other thing i didn't like it was almost like too many different stories happening at once like i felt like there was two maybe even three um parallel little parallel novels happening but they were all half baked and none of them had a really fully thought out storyline um character development ending any of it and i wish he had just kind of tightened that all better into one really fully fledged well thought out story rather than like these three paths and um yeah that was just that was just annoying because you never really got any sense of conclusion from any of them and like you start getting invested in like this one plot point and then it you know pff, hard left turn and now you're on this other plot point and then pff, hard left turn and like Okay, but I really liked that one. Like, can we go back to that one? Because you were doing something for me, and now we're over here talking about coochies. So I don't, I don't know. And then lastly, I'll say the whole like sentient mushroom haunted house ghost story has been done before. And that's not to say that you can't have multiple stories like that, but it's been done before recently, Mexican Gothic, What Moves the Dead. And it's been done a lot better by authors who understand how to write female characters a lot better. And there's literally zero instances of coming for your coochie in those books so if you like sentient mushroom haunted house books go read either mexican gothic or what moves the dead so that's my review overall i'm gonna give it two stars because i just i can't give out one stars one star to me means like this never should have been even written like this is a piece of junk you can't even like pass this off as a finished novel this was at least finished and edited pretty well there weren't like grammatical spelling errors but I just did not like it and I feel like I gave pretty well thought out reasoning so hopefully you don't think I'm just trashing this book. I really wanted to like it. I wouldn't have got requested it from the library if I wasn't interested in it. It just didn't, it didn't do it for me. It just didn't. So I don't know. And someone even put one of the authors on the back, their blurb said that
Chapman, the author of this, is a 21st century Richard Matheson. He's that good. No, do not compare this coochie, I'm coming for your coochie crap, with I Am Legend and Hell House. That's, that is an affront to humanity. <laughs> so that's it. That's my thoughts on Ghost Eaters. Um, if you liked it, I'd like to know, I'd like to know why. We can respectfully disagree, but uh, I think this is going to be one of my worst novels that I've read all year. So, and I'm upset. I wanted to really like it. So that's my thoughts. Um, I'm Sarah. This is Thrills and Kills Booktube. Um, if you are not already, I'd love it if you could subscribe. If you like this video, stick around, comment down below, tell me have you read this book? What were your thoughts? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Would you want to read a book that three times says it's trying to be a coochie? Because I don't know. That was I can't get over it. That was it's just too fucking weird. I can't get over it. So but that's it. Um hope you all have a great weekend and in the meantime, stay spooky, friends.